Christmas Eve. So we have two options. We are doing our regular 9 o'clock worship service, but it's going to be in the style of Christmas Eve. So there will be all the Christmas stuff. We will light the candles and, you know, do silent night and everything. So you may come at 9 o'clock, and we'll broadcast that like we always do, or 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock will also be the, the basic Christmas Eve service. So we're printing 180 bulletins. We really don't know how many are going to show and if we'll have a, a big crowd for the 4 o'clock or what. But we'll make it work. So that's what we're doing. Okay? Uh, if, you ha if you're traveling, drive safe. If you've got people coming, I hope they have a safe trip. Okay? Everybody got a hold an evening prayer? We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, take it away. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Your light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine with Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving show of God's own face. You who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, in the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice, let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way, loving spirit of salvation, lead us 
pass on to endless day. May God be with you all and, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. Amen. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. O oh God, I call to you. May your prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. The only lesson I was going to share tonight was in our Lord's Prayer, we hear Jesus pray about forgiveness. And Including with that is to ask God to forgive us as we forgive others. So I thought I would share a story about forgiveness tonight from the same writer I've used more than once. This is the, the author's name is Kent Nurburn, and this is a series of essays on the prayer of St. Francis, which is 
make me an instrument of your peace. And then there are all the different petitions. So this is on a petition near the end. It is in forgiving that we are forgiven. So let me share just part of this for you. I have many friends who carry on their shoulders the harsh burden of anger at their parents. They have been steeped in the ways of psychology. They see their own failures in life as a reflection of the twists and turns wrought upon them during their upbringing. They may be right. The alcoholic father, quick with the strap, leaves scars that run far deeper than the skin. The mother who abandons her children or clings to them in an orgy of self-absorption puts chains on their heart that can never be completely loosed. Yet, life is a gift, and each day a miracle. If we insist on dwelling on the flawed shape of our lives, we become blind to the beauty and mystery of the world around us. All of us have been wronged. All of us have wronged another. In an indirect but very real way, we wrong the earth itself by living on it. We use its resources for our own needs and pleasure, take the lives of other species for our own sustenance, yet we do no good by dwelling upon these wrongs. They are part of the act of living and simply show that we are engaged in the world in which we live. If we would truly experience the miracle of life, and the richness of each day, we must learn to forgive ourselves, those around us, and those who have come before us, on whose shoulders, for better or for worse, we stand. It is the only way to clear our hearts and spirits so that we are open to the fullness and beauty of life. <clears throat> Most people think of forgiveness as something that takes place in the space between people, and in many cases it is. But real forgiveness starts with the self. For until we can forgive ourselves, we can never see the world clearly enough to forgive others. I will carry with me forever the memory of my father, for whom education was everything, trying to go back to college after he had retired from a lifetime spent working to support a family. Tentatively, guardedly, he enrolled in a humanities course, a subject that had always fascinated him and about which he believed he had some understanding. Like the accurate and diligent man he was, he did all the reading, took all the notes, and approached every lecture with a great sense of preparation and serious mindedness. For his final project, he chose to do a paper on the history of the English language. He worked long and hard on the project, casting it in the form of a Socratic dialogue and investing it with all the creativity and diligence at his command. I remember him calling me after he had handed it in. His voice was bursting with pride. The intellectual yearnings submerged for 40 years were finally seeing the light of day. He could hardly wait for the response of the professor. When he got the paper back, he found it covered with red penciled margin notes and imperious comments. It apparently had landed in the hands of a graduate assistant who had taken it upon himself to savage my father and his struggling efforts at academic style and expression. My father said little, but sent the paper out to me. I was the only member of the family who had ever graduated from college. I was working on my PhD and was the one person he looked up to in terms of academic achievement. I was his only hope for salvaging such little pride and confidence as he had left. I do not remember what exactly I said or did. I only know that I regraded the paper and made a new set of margin notes. I'm sure I was guided by good intentions, but I'm also sure that in my efforts to sound academic and professorial, I further destroyed 
my father's confidence and a resolve. He never took another course again. My father is now dead. His single abiding passion in life was education. His greatest unfinished accomplishment in life was his undergraduate degree. And the one person who could have buoyed him up and spurred him on to get that degree was me. I failed to do so. I will go to my grave regretting that mistake. But the truth is, it was just a mistake. One among many that I have made in my life. Though it cuts me to the quick to think of the damage it did to my father's dreams, the fact is that it happened. I cannot change it. I cannot take it back. It is a dark part of the legacy that I will leave behind on this earth. Still, I cannot dwell upon it. The greatest gift I can give myself and my father is to forgive that mistake, costly though it may have been in human terms. If I were to dwell upon it, I would lose the joyful moments that remain in my heart about my father. And that single moment would color for all time my memory of the man in our relationship. Only by forgiving myself can I return the sunlight to my memory of my father. And perhaps more important, by forgiving myself, I give myself permission to forgive him for his failures and shortcomings in relation to me. This is the real power of forgiveness. It makes us part of the human family. It acknowledges that all we can do wrong and that we that we all can do wrong, and that we all need to be embraced and pardoned for acts that we perform and fail to perform. If we cannot forgive ourselves, we build a wall of defense around our own actions. We twist facts to justify our behavior, place harsh interpretations on the behavior of others, or we sink into an orgy of self-recrimination that keeps us from making any meaningful contribution to life. But if we can forgive ourselves, we allow ourselves and those around us <clears throat> the freedom to be less than perfect. We acknowledge that our shortcomings and those of others are but the natural reflections of human beings struggling by such lights as they have to do the best they can in this world. We learn to touch the world with a gentler hand. My friends who cannot forgive their parents are denying themselves that touch. Instead of celebrating the very fact that they were given the gift of life, they are parsing that gift and finding it wanting. They are withholding their forgiveness from those who need it most. And in doing so, are chaining themselves to an interpretation of the world that closes doors on the miracle of possibility. Got to find the end here. Each day offers us the opportunity for forgiveness. Someone cuts in front of us in traffic. Someone is abrupt to us in conversation. Someone we were supposed to meet fails to show up for an appointment. Our child or our parent or our spouse hurts us with a harsh word or action. Or maybe we ourselves speak harshly to someone or are unkind to someone in our words or actions. In all of these instances, the greatest gift we can offer is the gift of forgiveness. Forgiveness is something freely granted, whether earned or deserved, something lovingly offered without thought of acknowledgement or return. It is our way of mirroring the goodness in the heart of a person, rather than raising up the harshness of their actions. But most of all, it makes us one with the human family and allows us to live in the sunlight of the present not the darkness of the past. Forgiveness alone 
of all our human actions opens up the world to the miracle of infinite possibility. And that perhaps is the closest we can come in our humble human fashion to the divine act of bestowing grace. A quote I heard once that has stuck with me forever. A child becomes an adolescent when they realize their parents aren't perfect. They become an adult when they forgive their parents. They become wise when they forgive themselves. I hope we can learn to become wise. continue. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One. Strong is your kindness evermore. Humbling the proud of heart, you have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty. Strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through.
us in love. For peace and salvation we pray to you, God of mercy, hold us in love. For peace between nations, for peace between peoples, God of mercy, hold us in love. For us who are gathered to worship and praise you, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all of your servants who live out your gospel, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who govern that justice might guide them, God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who labor in service to others, God of mercy, hold us in love. Grant whether that nourishes all of creation, God of mercy, hold us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy, God of mercy, hold us in love. Comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. Let's stand for the last part of this, shall we? <clears throat> Why don't we say the prayer together? I think it's a really cool prayer for us, okay? Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep you now until eternal life. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. God, oops, I'm singing.